I want to help you, AMD. Free of charge, just drop by the lab and I'm gonna have the team show you how to benchmark a GPU so then you can choose a price that reflects its performance because frankly, you guys are all over the road here. The RX 7600, the card you're launching today, manages to get handily outclassed by your own products, is what I was going to say. Then on Monday afternoon, just 39 hours from launch, AMD dropped the price. Let's go gamers. We're gonna have a rough cut of our original review on floatplane.com slash LTT, if you're curious by the way, but the gist of it is this. We liked the card, but didn't like the price. Well now it is $60 less than the launch price of its predecessor. And it's within $10 of our suggestion that we thought would make it competitive, which is nice. But then they also dropped the price on some of their last gen products, making those even more attractiver. There is a lot to unpack here, but one thing we know for sure is that thanks to AMD, there are finally some, not one, some decent mainstream cards that gamers can actually afford. Let's start with the new kid on the block. The all new Navi 33 GPU at the heart of the 7600 is built on AMD's latest RDNA 3 architecture, which comes with some key benefits, like the addition of AI cores that, well, don't seem to do much right now, but uh, in the future, we're expecting that to change. You know, fine wine driver development and all of that. And right out of the gate, RDNA 3 also comes with substantially improved ray tracing performance. But then, so does the competition, and AMD has only made things more difficult for themselves. Just last month, they were over there throwing rocks at Nvidia over the lack of memory on their more affordable cards. I guess they forgot about their own glass house here. But, but this card is for 1080p where eight gigs is enough, says AMD. Unfortunately, that's not entirely true. Have a look. In F122, AMD pulls off both a big win and an own goal. Their last gen 6700 XT leads the entire field, beating even the 4070 that costs almost twice as much. But then their shiny new 7600 falls squarely in the middle of the pack and behind their own 6650 XT, a last gen card that at press time costs anywhere from 10 to $30 less rough start and definitive proof that you should completely ignore performance rumors for upcoming products. In Far Cry 6, AMD manages to avoid beating themselves at their own game by keeping ahead of their own lower priced cards, albeit barely. And the same goes for Hitman 3, where the most interesting result is actually the ARC A770. Intel's software team has clearly been working their butts off to the point where they now kind of sort of have a card that manages to keep up with the competition, or it did anyway. But can you keep up with this message from our sponsor? The Ridge. Father's Day is coming up. Luckily, Ridge is having one of their biggest sales of the year. Give the dads in your life a unique and functional Ridge wallet or key case so they can do dad things like brag about their wallet and keys. Check the Ridge out at the link below and make dad proud. As we tested more and more games, we realized that the main takeaway is that for 1080p gaming, you really don't need to spend more than a few hundred bucks on a replacement for your aging mid-tier GPU. Even in Returnal and Cyberpunk, we saw average frame rates above 60 FPS across our entire stable of modern cards, even if the 1% lows are a bit lower. With that said, there is a big asterisk here. Look at the results for The Last of Us Part 1. The 3060 has been quietly getting its butt handed to it the whole time and then boom, it's out in front of the 7600. Interesting. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. First, if you're a 1080p gamer, AMD's new card seems to slot into their lineup very nicely, falling behind its bigger older brother, the 6700 XT, by about 20% in both price and performance, while its little, though still older, brother, the 6650 XT gives up just 5% performance on average and doesn't net you much in the way of savings. Given that this is a newer GPU that will likely receive driver support for longer, the 7600 is getting very close to a recommendation here. Kind of like how we'd recommend an insulated water bottle from LTTstore.com. But first we need to talk about VRAM. Both Team Green and Team Red are adamant that eight gigs of GDDR6 is enough for 1080p. 
And yet, we found real-world examples of games that did struggle, especially those pesky PlayStation ports. This was very apparent when we saw the 3060 12 gig suddenly outperforming the supposedly faster RX 7600. And whether you like it or not, this is gonna be a trend, gamers. For over a decade now, consoles have been what dictates the rate of growth for hardware requirements. It's no coincidence that the PS5 and the Xbox Series X both feature a shared memory architecture of 16 gigs and 10 gigs respectively, and now all of a sudden, we're seeing games developed for these consoles that can demand significantly more VRAM than an eight gig GPU can provide. And with the potential for a mid-generation refresh to these consoles, it's not entirely unrealistic to expect that VRAM requirements could increase further in the coming years, take it with a grain of salt, rumors, and all of that. The issue on top of that though, is all of this is just for 1080p. If you own a 1440p display, you might desire that extra VRAM today, right now. Across our suite of games in 1440p, our rankings remain largely similar to the 1080p results, but it should be noted that the cards with the extra VRAM tend to hold their positions better. Intel in particular starts to pull ahead and even manage some small victories where it lost before. And the 3060 12 gig holds its position despite its much weaker GPU. Of course, we were a lot more upset about all of this before the 7600 got a new price point and Nvidia is clearly still the worst offender. Moving on, we know these are obviously not 4K cards, at least not without the help of their respective super sampling solutions, but our pattern continues with the 3060 12 gig closing its performance gap versus the 7600 while Intel extends its own. To be clear, we wouldn't recommend any of these cards for 4K Ultra Gaming, save for the 4070. But what's cool is that we no longer have to say the same thing about ray tracing. 7600 isn't exactly a ray tracing monster, but it did better than we expected at 1080p native. And looking at our results with Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which has massively improved, even if it does still lag behind Nvidia's DLSS, you can get a decent 1440p gaming experience. Although that is still a little like saying my Civic can do 130 miles an hour, as long as it's on a steep hill. So then, performance, pretty solid for the price, and going with next gen comes with other upsides too, right? Like a big leap in efficiency? No, actually. 20% more performance over last gen is gonna cost you a 20% increase in total board power. I mean, at least it doesn't overheat though? Yes, it, it doesn't. And while it isn't the quietest card, it's not offensively loud, despite its small size. We also do get DisplayPort 2.1, so that's cool. But AMD removed the one cable USB-C output that is so awesome on the 7900 series. So... Oh, but what about productivity? Well, Nvidia dominates Blender, thanks to its excellent CUDA integration. And while the AV1 encoding times are competitive with the more expensive 4060 Ti, that's a nice plus for YouTube streamers. The RX 7600's H.264 and H.265 encoding are nothing to write home about. Sorry, Twitch streamers. And in SpecViewPerf, it sits right in the middle of the pack. Though, I doubt that dazzling productivity performance would have persuaded the 7600's target audience anyway. Not that it really needs it. Assuming you can actually find one at MSRP, the RX 7600 is, I can't believe I get to say this for the first time in years, an attractive mainstream gaming card. However, I'm sure we weren't the only ones who were surprised by the price change, and AMD's partners may have been caught with board designs that make this new price point impractical. So it could be some time before the market is flush with sub $300 GPUs, at least from this gen. The good news is AMD has lots of other options with fresh price cuts as well. For as low as 320 bucks for the 6700 XT, you'll get a roughly 20 to 25% performance uplift for an equal bump in price, albeit with a higher cost of ownership from its increased power draw. The 6650 XT, meanwhile, is looking like a pretty okay, similarly priced alternative, and the 6600 is kind of the quiet star of the show if you can get it for the price we're seeing now. Just $200 you dues? And then there's Nvidia who has transitioned from making GPUs for gamers to making GPUs for fans of Nvidia. And now it's time to see our original outro for this video where I low key absolutely nailed it. It's not a budget productivity workhorse, nor is it a mainstream level gaming godsend. It just 
kind of sits there, with its main differentiators being shiny and new. Is that the play then? Try and get people who want the new shiny and aren't doing much research? Incoming transmission from the future. It's been six months, and in the wake of recent catastrophic events, AMD has decided to slash prices on their 7600. Now that it's available for $259.99, it's gone from no buy to no brainer. And it's an especially good value compared to the 4060, which is still $300 because Nvidia don't do no price drops. Anyway, AMD's AI course, uh, they, they do something now, so that's cool. And if any of this is wrong, just be sure to tune into The WAN Show on Friday, November 24th, 2023, to let Future Linus know that he went to the wrong time. Oh, oh man. God, they're coming! Oh. Man, man. Oh. And don't forget to tell Linus about the segue to our sponsor. <laughs> Vessi, it's springtime, which means rain can still show up and ruin your day like an annoying neighbor. But that's fine because hello, we have Vessi shoes. Vessi claims their shoes are 100% waterproof so we can go step into as many puddles as we want. Their Dymatex technology keeps their shoes light and breathable while still being stretchy and comfortable. Also, all of their products are vegan and cruelty free. Maybe you're planning a trip to get away from some of this miserable weather. Don't forget to pack a pair of Vessis. Their stretchiness means they can easily pack into your luggage or carry on. Rain or shine, here or there, it's always a great occasion to wear a pair of Vessis, mon frere. Go to Vessi.com slash Linus Tech Tips and get 15% off your purchase with code Linus Tech Tips. <sighs> Another time loop successfully closed. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out maybe the coolest implementation of RDNA 3, the ROG Ally. That thing is sick and really, really efficient.